evening and welcome to Tinkering with Etkelar. For this episode I have a smaller project on my desk again. Stagehands went on vacation so things didn't progress as much as they could. Heh, unions, right? So what do we have here? This little piece of history is a Philips G7000 video pack computer. Well, it has the word computer on it at least. This is the European edition of a very early gaming console that was known in the US and other markets as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. For some reason Philips chose to use their main brand here. There are a few slight variations of it around. This one is a model with an external power supply and hardwired joysticks. The listing had it listed as working, but otherwise it looked like it needed a bit of TLC. There are slight scuffs on the case, but not enough to make me want to repaint it. The power supply was missing too. Need to look into that. The joysticks are a bit rusted. That needs work. It opens easy enough. A few screws in the bottom and then that lifts right out. Annoyingly though, the power socket is heat staked into the bottom of the case while everything else is mounted on the top side. Also, lots of caked on dust on the case. After loosening a few screws, the RF modulator and the power board come out. The connection between the power and main PCB is soldered. Strange choice. Literally everything else inside has plugs. As usual, I take it all apart to scrub the hard to reach places too. I usually double check for broken plastics or similar at that stage too. The keyboard has one of those very feeble flexible PCBs and all the contacts look extremely corroded. Checking up on the general layout, this PCB is not the one from my schematic. Undoing the screws for the silver keyboard bezel next. The angled part makes it hard to pull apart. The keyboard was held in place with the bezel on the outside, but was glued down with double sided tape in the middle. A bit of careful poking later, it's off. The joysticks are looking a bit nasty. Better get into those. While the case comes apart quite easy, the actual stick mechanism is well hidden. There's a cover plate on the bottom that should twist out but is stuck. So more force needed. The stick is held in place with one of those annoying Starlock washers. The only way to get that out is by snipping it in half and later adding a new one. Same for the action button. Once the stick is removed, the PCB comes out and the whole lot can get a good cleaning in the sink. The second joystick is missing the bottom cover. 
the power socket is a weird one. I think it's the same type that was used on the plotter I restored a while ago. Time for a replacement. I undo the heat staked cover plate and make a new one that includes a hole for the regular barrel check. And clean up time! Also brushing up the springs that push on the direction buttons. They felt oddly rough on the surface. The joystick packs clean up reasonably well. Not perfect, but at least shiny to the naked eye again. A quick recapping is naturally on my to-do list. All of the electrolytics on the main PCB are just voltage stabilizers. Inside the RF modulator, two of them are used for DC filtering too, but nothing critical. Some shielding needs to be removed. There's plenty of solder on that, so it took quite a bit of heat to open. The RF modulator gets video and audio in as regular signals. It's easily modified for direct output to RCA sockets, but I want to keep it original for now. Eventually, I'd like to add a small PCB as a mod that allows me to switch over between RCA output or RF output. There's plenty of room in the rear of the case to add something like that. The power supply features two 7805 regulators with heat sinks. I put in fresh thermal paste. The recapping is simple enough, just very common values. Voltage ratings were all over the place originally, despite that there are no more than 5 volts anywhere within this thing. After connecting up the power supply again, the next logical step was to check for a video signal, and indeed, 
I get something that looks like a proper PAL output. Now the keyboard connector was oxidized, so I decided to give it a good scrub and promptly found out that two of the traces were a smidge thinner in one section. A quick repair job with some conductive paint should do the trick. To validate the output I set up my little Sony TV. Mm, yes, that is a picture, but it is not looking all that good. Does that thing not even do a proper empty screen without a cartridge? Let's plug one in to check. And yes, that's more like it. It says select game though. The manual doesn't mention that. It just says the game should start when powering up or resetting. A quick google search later, I hook up the keyboard and press 1 for the game selection. And woohoo, it works! But trying to play when the joystick is missing the stick is nowhere near joy. So let's button it up. But hang in there, shouldn't there be some sound? Poking the sound output, I can see occasional bursts of waveforms. There should indeed be some beeping and booping going on. I opened up the RF modulator again to poke around a bit and see where the signal gets lost. And oddly enough, when poking the audio carrier section, I suddenly can hear the beep from the TV. It took quite some hard thinking and pondering to realize what was happening. Apparently the oscillator was slightly out of tune, but whenever I added the scope probe, the input capacity would shift it into the correct range. A true quantum error. It is gone when you try to observe it. After a bit of adjustment in the oscillator coil, it's now all beepity boop. Now to assembling the joysticks again. The missing cover plate was not the only problem. Pictures show that the sticks originally had some black handles on them. So open SCAD it is again. And to top things off, my Starlog washer set is ever so slightly different than the original. So I needed to add about half a millimeter diameter in the recessed area of the stick cover to make it fit.
and at long last completed. Now for a nice round of Qbert. And maybe I can find some other fun cartridges eventually. And that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this little project. Up next will be something rather special. And that's why I'm not sure yet if I can make it within the next two weeks. So the next release is either going to be part one of the special project, a short update on an older project, or just delayed. Depending on many factors. So keep an eye out and see you next time. So now I need to add about half a, di half a diameter millimeter. Darn it. <laughs>